It is one after another today. Michael Bradley, Captain TFC, Kyler Yamamoto, and our next guest put up some pretty big numbers in Calgary last year. In fact, he was generating Team Canada talk best on best before it fell through, fresh off a three-year deal uh, that doesn't quite change Mangiapane to Fari Ilpane. My sad attempt to change eat bread to make bread in Italian. Hopefully, Andrew <laughs> Mangiapani is still here. He is. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for doing this, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I, I know you're a GTA kid. Did you grow up like a lot of my Italian friends going to Sunday school and learning Italian? No, no, nothing. I know very <laughs> little. Uh, my nonno and nonna are, still aren't happy that uh, my dad didn't, I don't think, uh, taught me some Italian. But... Um, yeah, I know very, very little. <laughs> yeah, you're of a different generation. All my guys had to go to Sunday school. Absolutely hated it, but they learned their Greek and or Italian. I, I mentioned we had Yamamoto on the show uh, earlier talking about avoiding arbitration and how nice it was to get it done and avoid that kind of awkwardness, the same kind of awkwardness in my Italian. But, but was it nice to get it done? Yeah, yeah, right. Um, obviously, there is a little bit of, uh, I think, you know, nervousness kind of leading up to it. I don't think anyone kind of wanted to go to arbitration. So, um, like he said, right, you're happy to get it done before, and I'm especially happy that I was able to sign for, uh, you know, a longer term deal and get three years out of it. Did, did you kind of want the longer term deal? Because that kind of stuck out to me a little bit here. Yeah, right. I was open to three years or maybe even longer, right? But um, yeah, we settled on three and uh you know i like calgary uh, calgary is my second home uh I like the organization you know teammates are great and you know everything about it so i was happy it was an easy decision for me i always wanted to go back and you know i'm happy that i was able to get three years yeah i'm sure there's a lot of fans in calgary here, uh, happy hearing you say that i, I know as a professional athlete that you kind of have to have supreme confidence. Hell, even to do this gig, I gotta convince myself that I'm good every once in a while. Um, but not many people saw the jump that you were going to make in the last year and a half coming for you. Did you know that the numbers and the jump in your game was there? Yeah, I always believed in, in myself, right? I, I think uh, when I first kind of came into the league, um, you know, I was kind of nervous and maybe a little timid and, you know, starstruck, right? Um, but as, you know, as the seasons went on, I started, you know, seeing glimpses of it. But now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm as confident as, I, as I've ever been playing hockey. And um, now it's just me just going out there, playing my game and doing whatever I can to help help the team win. So. Um, I think just kind of my success this year just came from, you know, playing with confidence and just trusting my abilities. How do you keep that growth going? Um, just, you know, training hard, keep going on the ice, right? Uh, I'm working hard now in the summers to, you know, keep keep growing as a player. But I, I think during the season, it's just, you know, getting out there and getting uh, opportunity and, you know, getting put in uh, different uh, situations. And obviously sometimes uh, there's some learning curve in that, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, when you're in those situations, you're learning from it. And, you know, obviously, you know, you're, you'll do good eventually, right? Right. Uh, it's no secret that there are some big time changes in, in Calgary. I'm not breaking any news here. Um, I say, we say it's a business all the time. Was it tough to watch uh, Johnny Goudreau and Matthew Kachuk, or at least the last couple of weeks here? Yeah, it's um, you know it's going it's going to be different kind of coming into camp. Um, you know, those two are two great guys, two great people uh, on and off the ice. So uh, I wish nothing but the um, you know success for them uh, on their on their new teams. Um, but now it's you know kind of you know opens up the door for the rest of the team. Obviously, they're they're two good players and, and they were doing some heavy lifting this year. So there's going to be some good opportunity for you know guys to kind of step up and uh, to fill their role a little bit. I was on Sportsnet 960, uh, the fan in Calgary, and uh, they asked me what I could say to Calgary fans to make them feel better. And all I could say was I'd give them a virtual hug if they wanted it, of course. Uh, what's, what's your message to one of the best fan bases in, in, in all of hockey? Yeah, obviously it's tough when uh, I guess you kind of lose those, those uh, two big guys. Uh, but, you know, like I said, the majority of guys are still there. And, majority of the guys are, are ready to win right I think we're, we're at that point and um, you know we're all kind of most of our ages we're, we're ready to win and we want to win so uh, it should be a you know exciting uh, season and uh, I'm just happy to get back there and just to you know even meet the new guys and just you know get things rolling I was thinking about what the lines might look like next season do you have any idea who you'll be playing with 
No, no, nothing, nothing like that, right? But um, I'm sure they'll be doing some uh, different line combinations and thinking about that. But yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, keep staying, uh, staying fit and keep working hard during the summer and just kind of um, be ready for kind of any possibility come training camp. As I asked that, I realized that's probably not something, that's probably not a Daryl Sutter type of thing <laughs> to start yeah. telling people where they're going to be playing uh, next year. What, we, we watch the news conferences, you know, we see the persona outside of the dressing room. What does Daryl Sutter bring to a dressing room uh, that impresses you most? You know, he, he's a great coach, right? Um, obviously, he's, he's won. And, you know, he's, he's just so smart, right? I think um, the biggest thing for me is, you know, he always wants uh, he always wants to win. He always wants uh, you to be your best, right? Um, and, th and that's kind of what you want in a coach. I, I know sometimes maybe he could be um, so tough on guys and everything. And, you know, but I think at the end of the day, he's doing it for, he's doing it to win. And, and that's why we're all here. We're here to win. And, and you know, you got to respect him for that. You know, it's funny, we all have different motivations, whether it can be a coach, whether it can be, you know, doing it for your family. Did, did you take any motivation from being a sixth round pick? Like, did you carry that with you as kind of like a, a chip to prove people wrong? Um, yeah, I think uh, even dating back to my, my OHL days, uh, my OHL draft uh, as well, right? I was, wasn't selected there and you know Dale Howard Chuck gave me a chance and you know I just wanted to prove people wrong there and then I was passed up in my first year eligibility going to the to the NHL and I went back to junior and still wanted to you know just prove people wrong that you know I, I believe in myself and I think I am a uh, can be an NHLer and then obviously I was uh, excited to be selected in the sixth round uh, with the Calgary Flames but I even now, I still think that I, I should have been maybe selected higher and everything like that. But I was just happy at the, the time and moment that I was uh, that I was selected, right? And they saw something in me. So, um, you know, I'm oh thanks a, a lot to Dale for you know kind of uh, Dale Howard Chuck for again it kind of started for me and the very organization. Um, right? They gave me a chance when kind of nobody else did. That's, hey, listen, uh, Tom Brady was a sixth round pick too, right? Like we yeah, all know yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I always, I, I usually tweet out around draft time, whether it's OHL, WHL, a CFL, like that's not the end. Like we have all these ranking systems all across every sport and it kind of sort of pisses me off because it, it places expectations, but I love hearing dudes who weren't on those rankings or got passed over in the OHL making it and just proof that like it's never over right yeah you know exactly i was always told uh you know you're a smaller player um work hard in school you know do good in hockey and you know go the ncaa route and then i went to barry colt's camp and i was just kind of just trying to measure myself up to see if i even had a career in hockey to see you know if i'm i'm good against these guys that are that are you know selected and by barry and drafted and everything like that and and I went to that camp, and then I ended up just kind of making the team, and uh, I was kind of up and down roller coaster uh, throughout my career, but uh, it wouldn't happen any other way. Yeah, you're trying out for the Barry Colts now. 35 goals in the show. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> One last one for you. Uh, have Have you reached out at all to Jonathan Uberdo, Mackenzie Weger, the new guys? Like, have you been able to kind of shoot some texts or even talk with them? Uh, not kind of one on one, but yeah. they they got added uh, pretty quick into our uh, yeah, our nice. group chat, our Flames group chat there. So uh, they just kind of said hi and everything. So can't wait to just kind of get to Calgary and, and meet them. Uh, obviously, they're two kind of great players. So excited to see what they can uh, bring to our team. Hey, awesome! Thanks for taking the time. Uh, continued success, and hopefully we can do this uh, the in season or maybe even in the playoffs next year. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Uh, there is Mangiapane, Andrew Mangiapane, fresh off career highs, goals, assists, and of course points in a couple of days after settling on a two-year, $6.2 million deal. Happy to have Kyler Yamamoto join us here on Tim and Friends. Thanks for doing this, Kyler. You, you back in Spokane? Uh, yep, yep, I am. Just awesome. hanging out right now, um, grinding away, but um, yeah, just hanging out. Does it feel good to get this thing done? Absolutely. Uh, it's been a couple stressful weeks but um really glad i got got it out of the way i think i would suck in arbitration i think i'd want to punch people in the face and that's probably not a good thing at all was it a relief to avoid kind of the process of going through arbitration 
Absolutely. I've just heard stories of arbitration, and um, yeah, when you're leaving it, I don't know if you're liking the team much more than uh, when you walked in. So I'm happy I avoided it, um, and happy you know everything went smooth and um, we got it out of the way. We heard a lot of compliments in that we call it a sot in the business, sound on tape, but that little highlight reel. I know for a younger guy, a lot of the transition is getting used to the speed of things at the National Hockey League level, and a lot of it is just gaining confidence in your game like I mentioned all the career highs and I know you were second in blocks in the team fourth in hits and and seemed to get better as the season wore on D did something click for you do you know why and how the numbers kind of bumped up like that for you from last year to this season um you know I really don't know um well obviously last year was uh it was a little bit tougher with the COVID year um, kind of just different. Um, you're playing a lot of games. It was just really jam-packed. Um, but I, I really don't know, honestly. Um, you know, I started out the season a little shaky this year, um, and then about halfway through the year, started to pick it up. And, you know, again, I played for Woody, um, Jay Woodcroft down in the AHL, and, you know, I loved him as a coach down there. And um, yeah, I really think he helped me when he came up um, and, you know, just finding my game again and, um, you know, calming me down and just believing in me and just – just being there. Is it just knowing your strengths? Is it familiarity? Like, what do you think it is that gives you that kind of that little extra gear from from knowing a coach? Yeah, I think just him knowing my game um, and him just talking to me every day, um, just telling me my strengths and you know I should be working on these things and um, etc. You know, um, I think he really just put me in the right uh, headspace and um, you know, I think I was able to flourish under him. What did you guys, I mean, how about, I won't ask you to speak for your teammates. What did you take from the run and then kind of the tough way it ended in the playoffs? What I took, um, it's hard. Um, the Stanley Cup playoffs is hard. Um, but, man, is it fun. Um, you know, being able to go to all those cities and, you know, experiencing all those crowds, um, playing all those tough games. Um, you know, I think just our team is so much more prepared, I think, for this year. Um, even with Kane coming back, now we got Campbell, Kulak all coming back. You know, it's, uh, it's exciting times right now, um, and, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. Kind of whet the appetite making a run like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that's the farthest, um, that's the farthest I've been in playoffs. So, um, you know, it just makes me want to get to the Stanley Cup now and win it, honestly. Uh, you, you guys are no secret anymore uh, after the run, and uh, you mentioned getting – uh, Kaner back, Evander Kane, and a lot of folks weighed in on that signing. What was he like as a teammate, and what's it mean to, to get him back in the fold? Um, it's huge to get him back in the fold. He was a huge part of our team, um, you know, the last last little bit, um, especially in playoffs too. So, but he was just a really good guy in the locker room. Um, you know, likes to have a good good chat in the locker room. Um, you know, just chirping guys. Um, you know, making it pretty easy on everyone. So it was a uh, it was fun having him around, and um, excited he's back. Have you ever crossed paths with Jack Campbell outside of playing against? Like, I know maybe some USA hockey stuff. He's got a couple years on you, obviously. But yeah. have, have you crossed paths with him at all? Um, you know what? I have not. Right. Um, but, I mean, I'm excited you to will. go meet him at camp. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to go meet him at camp this year. Um, seems like a really great guy and um, happy he's on our team now. Hey, this is a year where, where a couple of Americans have said love, peace, and hair grease to Canada. Uh, Campbell's an American guy going from one Canadian market to another. And, yeah. and I, I kind of struggle with this one because I kind of get it, especially with the pandemic and all. It's tough and you want your family to be there and it's not as easy to cross borders. And now with the airports being what they are. But, but I never hear, you know, basketball dudes shying away from passionate markets or, or a guy like Aaron Judge saying it's too tough to play baseball in New York for the Yankees what's your experience been like in Edmonton oh it's been awesome um personally I mean our fan base is just unbelievable um you know they're diehard fans and when you go play in front of them um you can definitely hear them throughout the, the whole arena so it's exciting and um being able to play with McDavid and Dreisel I mean the two best players in the world that's I mean yeah. how can you not get up for a game um you're going in and you're like I could be playing with the two best players in the world, so it's pretty exciting. But, you know, I loved it, 
and um, you know, excited for another two years. All right. So, what's the rest of the off season in, in Spoke? I know the answer is workouts and ice time and 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 getting the legs going. But what do you do yeah. outside of that? Like, are you a Vegas guy, Washington State? Like, are you hiking or water skiing? I know your brother played at McGill. Like, what's the Zen yeah. for the Yamamotos? Um, you know what? We've been golfing a lot this year. Um, trying to get out three, four times um, a week. Um, but yeah, honestly. Working out, skating, and then pretty much going to the course. All right. Who hits it better, you or your brother? <sighs> he just smoked <laughs> me the last round, but um, I don't know. It's pretty even, actually, but I want to say he's a little bit better than me. Are you Are you guys competitive? Like, I'm the youngest of four boys, and, like, the only thing that I learned was how to take a punch because it always got competitive, <laughs> and I'd have to duck my head and take the punch. <laughs> but are you guys competitive on the course, or is it just fun and the way to re relax? Um, absolutely. No, we're still competitive. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. all fun, but yeah, I'm still competitive. I definitely don't want him to win. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he wants me to win. So, but it's pretty fun. And um, like I said, he's a pretty good golfer, so I try. But yeah, he usually gets the better of me. Awesome. <laughs> uh, hey, great catching up with you. Thanks for doing this, and hopefully down the road uh, during the season, maybe even the playoffs, we can catch up again. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, no problem. And congratulations on the deal, of course. Thank you. There is Kyler Yamamoto of the Edmonton Oilers.